Before I get started, I know some of the usual suspects in the room, but I want the students in the room to tell me like what program or department they're in. So how about you two guys? Where you? What? Norwich University Environmental Science and Civil and Environmental. Okay. Uh, Norwich Civil Engineering. Okay. University of Vermont Environmental Studies. Okay. I'm back there. Um, I'm actually a staff member. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You look young. Uh, Norwich University Environmental Science. Okay. Uh, University as well, and, uh, civil and environmental. All right, great. Any other students in the back there? Um, Norwich University, civil and environmental. Okay. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody. Breck, I won't ask where your students are. So. Yeah. yeah that's okay. That's okay. There's many. There's many topics here, and it's it's 3:27. So you know. Um, so just a background here. I'm going to talk about two programs. Um, that kind of deal with compliance for permittees, municipal permittees for stormwater education and outreach and, and involvement. And then I'm going to talk, well, I want you to be thinking a little bit about what the skill sets that you might need if you get involved in this um, issue of stormwater. It's not just for engineers, it's for everybody. Um, so the background is here in the Chittenden County area, we have what are called MS4 permittees, uh, municipal separate storm sewer systems for. S's, right. And they consist of our urban and suburban municipalities here, and then the non-traditional ones of UVM, the airport, and VTRANS. And this has to do with the presence of impaired streams and runoff. I won't get into all that. It's part of NIPTES. Who knows what NIPTES stands for? All right, never mind. No. National, National Pollutant <laughs> Discharge Elimination System. Yes, yeah, something like that. EPA. Um, so. These permittees have to do six things, what are called the minimum measures. I'm going to talk a little bit mostly here about one and two, public education and outreach, and then two, public involvement and participation. There's other things that permittees, i.e. the towns, have to do um, to comply with their permit. So here in Chittenden County, we have something that's fairly creative for New England. We have a regional model for complying with these permittees. So rather than each permittee running its own education campaign with City of Burlington putting out flyers and Winooski doing its own set of flyers. In 2003, the towns and the other permittees came together and said, let's, let's pool our efforts. People live in one town, work in another town, and commute through five different towns to get to where they're going. So we need a regional message for how we do things. So the simple things we have at MOU, everybody pools their money together. And then these are town public works directors, engineers, public works people. They're not marketing people, okay? So let's pool our money together and hire a marketing firm to come up with a plan to uh, educate the public. Um, and then we at the Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission, we're not a county, we just play one on TV. Um, what do we do? My role is to staff support, pool the money together, hold meetings, and hire the contractors to do the work. And then they check the list and can send, tell, the, tell Vermont a and yep, we did minimum measure one because we participated in this regional effort. Um, so again, all the good things. Why, why, why does regionalism make sense? I won't read those, but you know why regionalism makes sense. Um, so what does this look like? So the backbone of what we do is we, we get people to go to the website and we, we show people ads to teach them about stormwater. That's minimum measure one. Again, public education and outreach. Um, so we, we buy ads. We do radio, TV. We moved a lot more towards web-based ads because you can track the progress a little bit of who views it. Do they go to your website if they click on them? We use Front Porch Forum, which is a new thing. Been around a bit. Um, and the web ads are nice because you can track how many people click it and then cost per click tells you which ones are the most efficient ways to advertise. Um, we do, this is what a print ad looks like. Lately, our messaging has been about slowing the flow, try to easy, simple graphics. And again, it's just to tweak people's interest, get them to the website. That's how we measure progress. It's the only way we can. You know, you can do, media likes to do these things about impressions. We bought a TV ad and there were 50,000 impressions, but you don't really know if that's true. Um, and all you can do is uh, measure who goes there. Um, so uh, let's see. I don't know if I can do one of actually one of these ads or not. But um, oh yeah, well I'll show you the, the website a little bit here because this is the uh, the um, I assume we're hooked up. Yes. Okay. 
Great. So I'll show you this little website here because this is, this is the backbone of our program. I'll take some time to walk, walk through it. So this is a website we've had since 2003. Um, we've tried to make it, it used to be not so pretty, but we kind of have to clean it up every now and then. Um, but we, we, this is our main vehicle for educating the public, so you have to make it interesting and engaging. Um, and uh, so I'm going to walk you through it a little bit. So the first thing is just trying to get people some messaging. So we, you know, we get people to land on something, and we say, okay, we want to we teach you about things. One of the first things, yeah, excuse me, um, we did, uh, which is one of our longstanding uh, elements is Stormville. This was something that was done by our first contractor here uh, several years ago, and it's been one of our most popular. And I want you to think about this from the standpoint of, you know, when you're doing public education and outreach, you've got to find ways that engage people in all aspects. Kids, first thing is get the kids, because how many of you probably guilted your parents uh, about uh, issues of recycling or whatever and all, right, exactly. And then how many of you, you know, even just around the university setting, you know, hey, where's the recycling? Or where's the, you know, the water bottle thing? These kinds of things. Uh, in my day, it was the Indian, you, know, you don't want to make the Indian cry. because the ads on TV with the crying Indian, all that stuff. So we're not quite there where you get the kids, you know, going, Mom, Dad, what's going on with the runoff on the property? But, like, where's our rain barrel, you know? So, uh, and, uh, you know, I have two teenage daughters, so they keep on, I mean, they keep bugging me about the compost thing. And I'm like, I'll, I'll start a compost pile when they force me to, but that, that'll be the next thing or whatever and stuff. But you think about these, these elements to get people aware of what's happening. And so it's the same thing. It's going to take time before the kids are start really being aware. So this Stormville one has been a lot of fun. It was done in Java or whatever years ago. Um, but I'm going to kind of walk you through it a little bit because it's a simple messaging. And then you start to think, as I'm talking about our med the messaging we do here, start to think about what are the skill sets involved in doing community outreach. And there's, there's quite a few. And we'll talk a little bit here about the end. Um, so you get to Stormville and you go, hey, we've got to learn about things. Um, so, okay, we've got little practices going on here. You got people doing this. So like what happens? Oh. All right. Who's, all right, see? So it pops up. Yo, what's going on with the washing the car? Uh, who's, who's that? Who's that who popped, who was that who popped up in the lake there? Did anybody get that? Champ. That's right, that was Champ there. Um, so there you go, so you move the, on there. We've got what happens, you rain on the dog. Jeez, that's loud. Yeah. Okay, and then we add a little thing more. People really wanna dive deep into the issue of pet waste, you can find out what's going on there. Um, and we got the fertilizer issue here too. Right. So again, the simple message here, people can read a little, you know, little kid can understand that, etc. And, all. and this, is, this is really a fun one. In the world of stormwater, we all beg and borrow from each other. Uh, there's so much information out there on the web, et cetera. Um, and this one, we've been doing this since the start of probably 2004. We haven't taken this one off. It's still great. I get three or four calls a year from around the country and say, hey, can we use this? And I mail them a disk, you know. And, or even then, just somebody could, you could do this, take, you take this in Seattle you know, put a little salmon in there, et cetera, you know. Uh, you, you could use it in Scotland or whatever and say it's the Loch Ness, Loch Ness Monster. Um, so that's, that's been a lot of fun. Um, and this Stormville one here is just, just really uh, useful for people. Um, then, you know, you've got to kind of walk people through it. So, you know, we can, have a, we can have a glossary of terms. We hear these things all the time. 
you know, I didn't know any of this stuff, and I have two master's degrees, so it tells you, <laughs> tells you what that was worth. So, uh, but, you know, best management practices, first flush, that's a key one here. We've talked about rain barrels, what's hazardous waste, what's a discharge, what's an illicit connection. I mean, it, these are kinds of things that we throw around all the time, those of us in, in the field, but the average person is, you know, they're, they're at, here a select board meeting, city council, and there's somebody from the stormwater department talking about, well, we need to raise taxes so much to cut down illicit connections, IDDE. But, uh, what's all this stuff? So at least, you know, this is an issue that's not going away in Vermont. It's not going away in Chittenden County, certainly. It's spreading to the rest of the state. So you've got to start providing the background for people. Um, the, uh, so, and then we try to get people, again, this is a simple website. You could, you could dump people, you could load it up with information, or you can just point them to stuff that's already out there. So when we go, you know, look at, we go look at Chittenden County resources, um, we, you know, we've got all the websites for all the municipalities, which are quite robust, even amongst themselves, to get, you know, if people really want to learn about, oh, well, what's my town, what are my taxes? what's going on, um, and, and all the towns, you know, to varying degrees, depending on their resources or grant getting skills or how much staff they have, have, have quite robust work. Colchester, you know, got a million dollar grant a couple years ago through Senator Leahy's office and did a big water resources plan for the whole town because you've got complicated issues of, of development, you've got ag, you've got, you're trying to promote growth in certain areas to grow your community, grow your tax base. There's, there's a lot of information there that the people can dive deep on. Um, and then Vermont resources, of course, there's plenty of that out there already. Um, you know, so why would we, you know, why would we, uh, again, have reams of copy paste on our own website, just point people to the state and, and, and the right place. Uh, national resources as well. Um, the issue of educators, um, so EPA has got several sites where you can play around with stormwater for hours if you really want to learn this. Um, the issue of educators, I bring this up. This has been a, I won't say it's a, what's the word? The good news is that, is that we, we see teachers doing more and more of this work. The hard part, of course, we had a discussion 10 years ago we're like, oh, we need to do more stuff in the schools. More, stuff. yeah. And it's hard because the teachers have like their mandates, especially at the elementary school level. They've got to, and and um, at the high school level, all the levels of, you know, they have to have a curriculum they have to do. They have to their own requirements at the school board setting. And me, so we're coming with our little stormwater message, which is kind of esoteric. And then meanwhile, there's somebody going, hey, the opiate crisis. Oh, you got to do that in your curriculum. And then, oh, we got to teach about diversity. We've got to teach about forestry. I mean, you name it. Everybody's trying to, like, get their message into the kids. And meanwhile, the teacher's trying to design a curriculum a year ahead of time. So you can't really just expect to show up to a teacher and say, hey, can you guys teach about stormwater this spring? <coughs> well... No, you got to start early to how you're going to build an integrated curriculum. And then, yeah, slowly but surely over time, whether it's, you know, good examples like UVM Watershed Alliance. But, you know, that takes years to get into place. So just be aware of that. Any kind of project, you've got multiple partners. It's going to take a while to integrate it. But if you do it slowly but surely, and, you know, good examples there from Norwich that we just heard, um, Great, great way to do it, and of course, or using you know graduate students is, is another great way to, you know, mul multiple year commitment is a way to, to get some of these projects done. Um, so let's see, uh, where am I? And I won't sh I won't bother showing you one of the ads. So um, again, the point is here we what we try to do is track so we can track web hits. That's a that's one of the best ways you can at least do something with data. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a steady thing. The, the little spikes you see here correspond with our advertising programs. And it's somewhat limited. We do $20,000 in the spring and $10,000 in the fall. Uh, nobody sued us to say that's an inadequate amount and we're out of compliance. We always wonder what would happen if that, somebody did that. And say, your permit's being violated because 
you spent nine, $9,999 on an ad instead of 10,000. So luckily that has happened, but this is how we track that. And you know, we try to dive deep on like, how many, t you know, which pages are people going to, but ideally with any kind of, any kind of website, but especially in the world of, of, of public outreach, is to stay on top of that Google Analytics data because you, maybe you'll find some pages that you've got pages there and nobody's going to them. So what's wrong with the pages? Or maybe they don't need to be there, uh, et cetera. Um, but you find out a lot of interesting information, of course. And, and again, what's the, the key thing is, um, you know, the, the website work is so critical because oftentimes people go, well, let's, you know, we make a brochure, we have some posters, that's our outreach. I'm like, well, uh, but now even the web is getting a little tired and you say, well, what, we need, no, we need QR codes. Okay, so QR code data is interesting, gets people there. Okay, they looked at it, they scanned it, did they really get it in their brain? So the next part about tracking this is getting back to the earlier presentation we saw about survey data is, so we try to every, every five years we do a survey. Um, and there's multiple questions, some of which you've seen in, in some of the other discussions. But you know, we, we've seen some improvements. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, we, we've, we've seen improvements in people's reported behavior of when they go take their dog for a walk. We don't know if this is true, but at least in the issue of pet waste is out there. We've shown, seen improvements to that. Overall knowledge of what is stormwater, where does it go, is it treated or not treated, um, th this kind of uh, improvements. Um, we've seen, you know, continued again on, on the pet waste issue. The drop in the use of fertilizer. There's been a lot of messaging around fertilizer. One of the scariest things we started to do uh, in a partnership several years ago, we, we quite, did quite a few ads that said things like don't gas soil test. Um, you don't need to be fertilizing in the spring. Uh, so the great, you, the, the interesting thing is you want people to fertilize in the fall or like late summer, fall, so the fertilizer has time to work over the winter. You don't want to be doing it in the spring or in the summer when it a, doesn't have time to absorb, and, and B, can wash off. Um, but one of, the, one of the scary things is, is like, oh, good, let people are less fertilizing. And then you ask the people that still fertilize, when do you fertilize? And it's pretty much all year round. It's kind of scary. Um, so there's still people out there, obviously, still using uh, fertilizers. Um, so that's, uh, again, so you, have to, so you have to track it. So that's, that's minimum measure one, and a variety of skill sets involved dealing with marketing and web design and things like that. Um, so then the other uh, component is what's called minimum measure two, public involvement and participation. In the past, the towns were compliant with this or could check the box because they participated in Green Up Day or maybe they had the Boy Scout troop do a pickup litter, kind of ad hoc. So this was a project uh, uh, conceived of with, some, with the rest of our towns to say, well, let's regionalize this effort and get professionals who do this kind of work for a living, but also give it a regional identity. And there were efforts out of Washington State of stream teams, that's where we got the name from, um, around Tacoma, Washington area with the whole salmon issue. So there's a lot of identity in that region, obviously, with, with salmon. So uh, again, we, uh, same concept, we're, we're the, we're the lead agency, and who do we hire is Winooski Natural Resource Conservation District, and Holly's right here, she's new to this. Um, and we focus on outreach to spread the word, and then we do hands-on activities. And we also kind of convince the state, like, look, we're gonna do a regional effort, it's gonna be good, and there's nothing, on the, there's nothing in the permit law that says you must hold an event in every town every year. Like, show me where in the EPA permit it says that. So we're going to do three events. You know, we're going to work in three towns per year systematically, but do broader events. Um, and again, it's about finding the right people to do the job, because Winooski Natural Resource Conservation District was already doing this job. And like many nonprofits, just like us, they're hungry for some money. So hey, we give, you, give them a contract to do the kind of work they're already doing. They're already recognized as specialists in the field. So let's do that. Um, so again, website. Facebook, and I'm just going to go to the Facebook page here to give you a, a flavor of, of, so what does this look like when you get, when you get people involved? Um, 
And so there is a website, but that's not the robust, the most robust portion of it. Um, the, the key thing here is, you know, and again, thinking about careers and things that you do when you work on stormwater. So uh, Grant's, yeah, where is he? Yeah, yeah so, so anyway, so uh, you're thinking about like, so we, the, the project's done rain barrel workshops, it's planted rain gardens, it does tabling events. So again, there's a different skill set. It's like everything from learning how to use a drill to supervising a group of teenage boys in a stream <laughs> with lots of rocks and sticks to play with. But hey, the trash is getting picked up and, and people are doing good stuff. Um, tabling, look, there's a rain barrel, having conversations with people, working in public works garages. Uh, but the fascinating thing about this, you put on a rain barrel works, I'm like, all these people show up. Like, who knew? But everybody, like, is into this. A lot of people just wanted to catch the rain to do their gardens, you know, um, and stuff. But it's really interesting to see. And, uh, you know, people learn things. They meet their neighbors. The artwork component is tremendous. Uh, our Regional Planning Commission had a big EPA grant, and we hired uh, Becky there um, did, with Sea Grant with a, a big $40,000 contract three years ago to do this big rain barrel connecting the drops project. We had the rain barrels on Church Street and all up and down. We had a big reception. We had artists paying them a couple hundred dollars to paint these. These are, the, these are like the student ones. Uh, but you have an auction, you get people really interested in it. Um, I mean, these things are just fun. This was just, Williston, this is, our th this is our third year of doing it, what's called Connecting the Drops Project. So you combine the rain barrel workshop for assembly with piggybacking on the July 4th parade picnic. There she is. There, she's Connecting the Drops. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's, it's just fun. And, and, and like I say, people when we had the bidding years ago, and then people are spending a couple hundred dollars on some of these rain barrels, they're beautiful uh, you know, works of art. And again, it may not really get much in the way of rain, especially if it's a heavy rain, but the educational components are tremendous. You put one of these out there on, this, on your house, and you know, neighbors go, oh, what's that? It's a rain barrel. Well, why are we doing this? Oh, well, you know. I got learned about it from the stream team, and then there's so-and-so at the public works department, will, you know, et cetera. Um, so anyway, lots of, lots of fun stuff. Yeah, you can stand up in front of the, uh, the, the, the townspeople and spread the word and stuff and get kids involved, um, so on. So, um, so just continuing on here. Um, so again, how do, you track, how do you track public outreach efforts? Well, you can do stuff, the web traffic, you can do that. Facebook likes okay, but then everybody wants to be your friend. Uh, we need, I think we need Snapchat, like, I don't know, I get my, I get my daughters to run the Snapchat and that will be a good one, good thing. Uh, E-newsletters, tracking volunteer participation rates really key. Keep a track of everybody who shows up, how many people came to your table, how many people came to this workshop. So, I was supposed to hide this screen, all right. <laughs> so lots of different skill sets here and uh, I'll, um, I'll walk through some of them, but uh, but before I show my screen, I'm going to get some student involvement. All right, so you've just heard all about all these public engagement mechanisms and all. What are some skill sets we need to do all this work? What are skills are you learning that might be applicable? Yes. All right. How about technology? Any technology skills here? Come on. Is one of your professors here in the room? That's what we need. Yes. You have a Norwich professor here right in the room, so impress her with your skills. So, okay, anybody do web stuff? Nobody do web stuff, okay. Uh, anybody do any engineering, like actually in, digging in the dirt? Okay, okay, some, yeah, all right, good, good. All right, so, all right, no, it's late in the day here, I'll give you guys a break. So, uh, one of the biggest skill sets, creative writing, okay. There's, there's way, depending on your audience, there's ways to write things and there's ways to not write things. Uh, and there's never, there's nothing more, uh, what's the word, unappealing to somebody, the general public, whether you're trying to convince them to do the right thing or explain why you're raising their taxes than bad writing or a bad PowerPoint presentation or so on or a bad explanation in the city budget. 
uh, and all. Uh, graphic design, that's a big one. There's loads of stuff out there. And it, again, I, I, I can write. I'm not very good at graphic design. So you can hire somebody who can whip out a nice, pretty brochure that's simple and engaging and knows how to make it look like that. Um, and all. Web design is key. And that's, of course, an evolving thing. A lot of stuff costs a lot of money, you know? And so you're trying to keep. Even if you're just doing a website update, you're trying to make it fresh, which we've had to do every few years for our stormwater uh, program. Um, you know, and, and even j just all that, you know, because people, you, people you're, you're doing this programming year after year. Hi, it's Dan, stormwater. Hey, people, come on, let's do the right thing. Well, I go to your website and look, there's nothing new here, you know. So that's, that's a, a key skill. And obviously, we've got to find a way. I mean, my website, it's, it's, I guess it's sort of mobile friendly. I mean, it doesn't crash, but it's not really sized for the screen and all that stuff. So, so that's a key one. Uh, this is one of the biggest things. This, is a, this type of campaign is what's known as social marketing. So you hear things about like, hey, don't smoke, or get lead paint. That's all. It's a whole specialty world called, called social marketing. Behavior change marketing. And there's loads of ways for people to think about that. Even in this messaging, do you present, we're, we're designing an ad right now that we're about to run out this spring and you know, we talk about the lake and, and we have this debate literally about do we use the phrase, we all, love, we all love swimming and boating and fishing in the lake, but sometimes it's kind of gross. Or do you say, we all love swimming and fishing in the, and doing things in the lake, but sometimes it's not as clean as it could be. So which do you use? Do you use a gross message to shock people into action? Or do you, but that might turn them off. You know, if you're, so it's all these, even little discussions about that are, are key considerations for any of this kind of outreach you work, whether it's stormwater or smoking or all these kinds of issues. There's, there's, once you start taking an advertisement and you pa unpack it, well, what does it mean? It's, are we turning people off? Do we show a positive message? Hey, plant a rain barrel. Look at this. It's pretty. Or do we say, your driveway is killing Lake Champlain? <laughs> ah! You know? I mean, really, it's this hard thing, too. So, and then it gets complicated, too, because there's all these different environmental messages, et cetera. Um, and all. I once... Uh, uh, Berated a guy I saw who let it was legging his dog poop on the uh, on the grass next to the parking lot at the office, and I was sort of picking up like, "Hey, I'm like, hey, you want a bag? I got some in my car." And he's like, "Oh yeah, all right, I'll pick it up. Yeah, sure, but it's the farmers that are the real problem. So you take this and you throw it into the big public policy issue. There's all these considerations. The public and the kids. That's a real skill set, you know." Um, I think people know the technological things. So what the tech you, hey, people adopt this technology. And then, and then we wonder why not everybody's an early adopter and stuff. Uh, engineering, landscape engineering is still key. You've probably seen some presentations of beautiful rain gardens and bioswales and floating wetland ponds and all this cool stuff. You know, but then, so that's the engineering. But then you've got to overlap it with how to make it look pretty and nice and in incorporating green technologies into site design. Um, and there's really some nice stuff, the way to do that, that makes, wow, what an attractive building that people don't even realize it's functioning as a stormwater treatment mechanism. Uh, and then my personal fave, was a 20 years of nonprofit work, so you need somebody to like write the grants and report on the grants and, and do that. And so you need people to work, go out there and work with the kids and get people, you know, somebody to write the brochures and you need engineering people to, Walk around with the kids and, you know, maybe get the, you get the person who's good with the kids and meanwhile that information is transmitted to the engineering staff uh, to say, okay, how can we redesign the school parking lot and stuff? So all these skill sets come together to get a final uh, product in the end. So, um, any questions? Thanks. Yeah, Tom. More comment than a question. So when you were wringing your hands about, well, the teachers have all this other stuff coming at them and opiates and yeah. diversity and all this stuff. I mean, 
find out what the standards are and show how what you're doing fits in with their standards for science, for literacy, for mathematics, yeah. and so forth. And you know, that's what a lot of people here in this room and others are doing. And and they they do the job help do the job for them. Yeah. Yeah, and the key thing as a student is as you research a project is Vermont is blessed with lots of, you know, I, my group, Chittenden County Regional Planning, university folks, New City, NRC, find out who the partners are, because we've got stuff that needs to get done, but many, you know, we just need all the hands on deck to get it there and stuff, so um, we'd be happy to, yeah, and, I, and any of us are always more than happy to, or any of the municipal staff, the public works guys, to go to the schools, to go to your campus and say, I want to, you know, I, wanna, I need to do a project, so. All right, thank you. Appreciate it.